Warning, if you are against the consumptive use and the ethical harvest of fur-bearing animals, please leave this channel now. This is no place for pansies, sissies, or crybabies. Hey trappers, Dale Billingsley here, Billingsley Brand Lures. So guys, what I want to talk to y'all about today is trap placement for beaver, foothold trap placement for beaver, in correlation to the type of bank that you have offered to you, as well as in correlation to lure placement. I think that's very important. I think a lot of guys overlook this, and I, and I think that maybe we need to touch on it just a little bit. So let's get things set up here, and we'll get rolling. All right, guys, so I've got a few, a couple different situations set up here. We're doing this on dry ground just for demonstration purposes only because I want everybody to see and be able to understand what I'm trying to get across. If I was trying to do this out in the water, I don't think you'd be able to get the full concept of what I'm doing here. Um, so what we've got here, we've got a f kind of a flat tapered bank, and I, and I hear this a lot. Of, a lot of guys have trouble with these, these tapered open type bank situations especially guys from the north that are trying to go down south because they've never encountered those type of banks on those cypress breaks before because a lot of times there really isn't a bank there it's just flat as flat can be and they don't understand or they don't know how to guide the beaver because they've never been faced with that situation so here's what i've done i've taken my tile spade over here and i've dug back a channel or a trough to guide my beaver and focus him up in here. Now, I'm not saying that he'll always come straight in. That's not what I'm getting at. A lot of times you'll see where they've come up on the bank, you know, five or six, maybe even seven, eight feet away from your set and walk down the bank to work the mound and then come back into the water. So his easiest way back, he's not gonna walk back over yonder to go back in. He's gonna come right down this chute that we've cut with our, with our spade. So, I've got my, my favorite beaver trap. Not saying it's the only one out there. I, Good Lord, I don't want to get called out on that too. Uh, anyway, this is my favorite beaver trap. This is a number three. This one happens to be a Northwoods coil spring. I don't drown my beaver. I hold them all alive and I hold 90% of them by the front foot. I know I've got professionals out there telling me that you can't do it, but I'm going to prove to y'all that you can. Um, for those of you that have tried it, you know dang good and well that you can do it. So anyway, five pounds of pan tension, number three, big square jawed, that's what we use. Set the trap. Now I have dug, this, I've got this Burma dirt out here in front of my trap. That gives that beaver something to breast up against, okay? If he comes in straight on, he's going to breast up against this, put his front feet down. I have a, a bed. An actual bed for the trap dug back here. This is just like you would if you was trapping a fox or a coyote or a bobcat. You want him stepping down. I want the loose jaw with the center of my approach, okay? That offsets that pan about three inches. And if you measure most beaver from the center of their chest over to their front leg or front shoulder, you're going to notice that it's about three inches, okay? You don't want it off over here, squared up center, because he's going to pinch it with his chest. Bring it over here where his leg is going to be, where his foot is going to be. Now, I'm back, oh, from where the water line will be about right here, once we dig this out and the water fills back in. So we're going to have somewhere between three to five inches of water over top of this trap. So your water line is going to be about right in here. Now, if I want to catch that beaver by the back foot, generally speaking, your lure stick will go way up high like this. He'll come in and breast, and he'll rear up to want to get a smell at that. So if you want to catch him by the front foot and keep him down low, bring that lure stick down right about on top of the water. Wherever the lure is, that's where his nose is going to go, all right? That's very important. You have to know that. Wherever the lure is, that's where his nose will be. So if I want to catch him by the front foot, I'm going to bring it down to where it's just off of the top of the water. If I want to catch him by the back foot, I'm going to bring it up here. Okay, I hope that makes sense to everybody because what it is is he's going to rear up and come up to it. 
even on a flat tapering bank. Now, this doesn't always hold true, all right? Because again, sometimes he'll come up down yonder a ways on one side or the other, work your mound and come back. And a lot of times when he comes back, he'll slide in, he'll slide them front feet right over top of this trap and you'll, he'll plant his back feet to kick off. So you're gonna catch him by the back foot. I don't care if I catch him by the tip of the nose, as long as he's still there when I get there in the morning. That's all I care about, okay? A catch is a catch no matter how you catch him. So this is the way I normally set though. I want down low with my lure stick, approximately 10 or 12 inches back with my trap, three to five inches of water over the trap because I like to catch them by the front foot. It's just easier for me. Okay, I'm not saying that it's the only way to do something. It's just easier for me to target the front foot. And again, it kind of goes back to a pride thing a little bit because I have so many people tell me that I, you can't do this. You can't hold them by the front foot and not drown them. Well, bullshit. That's just all there is to it. It will work. It can be done. I've done it hundreds of times, more than hundreds actually. But it's just, you know, I'm not trying to brag on myself. I'm just saying it can be done. All right. So anyway, when you're on a flat taper bank, this is the way I like to set. Now we'll go over and we'll look again here at a, at a more slope, straight up and down type situation and kind of go over where the trap should be placed there along with the lure stick too. All right, guys, so here we are. We're on a more steeper type bank. We've got our bed dug for our trap right here, down deep like we like it. We've got our Burma dirt out here in front for the beaver to breast up against. Again, the trap goes in here like so. Loose jaw centered with the center of the, of the approach. Our water line is gonna be approximately about right here. Again, if we wanna target that front foot, our lure stick is gonna go right there. Let me tip this up just a little more so y'all can see. There we go. You want your lure stick right there. His nose is gonna be here. His front foot is gonna be right on top of the pan of our trap. Now, if I, again, if I wanna target that back foot, I'll move that lure stick on up. Again, let me raise that camera. Move that lure stick on up here. Now I've got him coming in and rearing up, and I'm gonna catch him by the back foot. If you're using those big TS-85s, if you're using the number five, MB-750, uh, something of that sort, I would suggest you take note of this and try to target that back foot, okay? Those are not front foot traps, unless you're drowning them, all right? You, you try and hold them alive in those big irons, as I've went over several times, is not the thing to do. Using number threes, number fours, coil springs, not double long springs, but coil springs. Then you put them on the front feet if you want to and hold them alive just fine. And that's when you bring your lure stick on down closer to the water's surface. All right, gang, I hope that helps some people. I really do. I hope that uh, it's, it's been educational for you. Uh, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as fast as I can, as best as I can. Once again, guys, I'd like to uh, offer my, my services to you as far as the school goes. I'm putting on a school, a trapping clinic school, uh, May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Uh, two and a half days of, of intense trapping instruction. I'm going to put you up. I'm going to feed you. Uh, it's all for the cost of $1,000. All you have to do is get here to beautiful Van Buren County, Iowa, uh, right in the heart of Bill Nelson country. Bill just lived five and a half miles down the river from me at Farmington, Iowa. Uh, he's buried about 12 miles from here at Croton, Iowa, so we are right in the heart of, of his old trapping country. Um, again, cost is $1,000. I'm going to put you up. I'm going to feed you, all that good stuff. Uh, guys, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to watch. I do appreciate you. I appreciate everything y'all have done for this channel. Once again, this is Dale Billingsley with another one. Signing out.